two nurses had came in and they was like, all right, we have to move you around because we got to get the baby heart rate up because it dropped really low. So they told me to go on my hands and knees on the bed. So I turned around, go on my hands and knees, and then they trying to find his heart rate to try to see if they can get it up for me moving around and stuff. So she looked at the charge and was like, all right, now nah, she, y'all need to bring her upstairs because we need to get the baby out right now. What's up, you guys? It's DJ Shanti back with another video. If you are new, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So this video, I'm going to tell you guys how my labor delivery went. This is the story time. So this day was so crazy. It was August 4th, 2020. So um, after I took the castor oil, um, After I took the castor oil, later that night, uh, I would say it started around like six or something when I noticed something. So I'm like, why is he not really moving as much as he normally do? Like something going on, something is wrong, you know what I'm saying? So I ended up calling the, the OBGYN office where I normally see the doctor there. And then um, he went in the office, but I talked to a different doctor. They had called me back or whatever. And I was telling them what happened and what was going on and stuff. I'm like, okay, he's normally an active baby. I normally always feel him every, you know, every once in a while, but I haven't really felt him move as much as he normally do. And that's what I've been having like irreg irregular contractions as well. And then they was like, okay, well come in and let me let us come in, let us check you make sure everything is okay i'm like, all right cool so i was not expecting to have him that day i was not expecting that i was expecting for them to be like all right boom you're not even dilated you know he's okay he just just chilling that's what i was thinking so my husband dropped me off to the women's center that's where you give birth to babies or whatever and then they they saw I mean the lady was standing right there like are you blah blah, blah. I'm like yeah and then um, so we had walked in the back or whatever and then she um, you know she got me all my information got me in the room got me set up to the monitor so she could check the baby heart rate and so she could check my contractions first it was all good they they found the heartbeat he was sounding good you know what I'm saying. And then after a while, it just dropped, like, it just dropped, and it was, like, really slow and, like, low. And so, two nurses had came in, and they was like, all right, we have to move you around because we got to get the baby heart rate up because it dropped really low. And I'm like, okay. I'm still not thinking none of it. I got my ice and stuff. And I'm not thinking none of it. Like, I didn't think it was, like, serious, you know what I'm saying? So, so then they turned me to the left side. And they're trying to find a heartbeat. They end up finding it. The one nurse had left out. The other nurse stayed in, and then she was. And then they dropped again. And then she was like, "All right, turn the other side." She couldn't get it up or nothing. And then she called that nurse back in, and then um, she was like, um, "They couldn't find the heartbeat, or, or they couldn't get it to go up." So they told me to go on my hands and knees on the bed. So I turned around, got my hands on you, and then they trying to find his heart rate to try to see if they can get it up for me moving around and stuff. Still, it didn't go up like how it needed to go up. So they end up calling the doctor that was on that was on call or whatever, like that deliver babies and stuff, and she told her to look at my charts. So she looked at the charts and was like, "All right, now nah, she, y'all need to bring her upstairs because we need to get the baby out right now." That's what they told. That's what the doctor told the nurses. So then they told me like, "All right, we about to have the baby today. We we gotta have emergency C-section." I'm like, "Are you kidding me? That is most definitely not what I wanted. I did not want a C-section. No, but obviously it's not in my hands right now. You know what I'm saying? I want the baby to be here rather than something happen while he my stomach and then you know what I'm saying." 
So, so um, I'm still on my hands and knees, and they're like running me upstairs. I had called my husband, and I'm like, okay, baby, like I had a baby. He's like, what? Because mind you, he dropped me off, because we didn't think, we, we didn't think like, I was going to have a baby or nothing. He dropped me off, and then he was going to bring, um, he, bring, he brought my, our oldest son to his dad's house, and he was going to be back up there anyways. But it happened, like, so fast, like, he just got to his dad's house, and he's like, okay, well, I'm about to go over there right now. So, so in, a, in between the times, like, they ended up taking me to the wrong room. Had to get off the bed, get back on the bed, and they, then I, they took me to the surgery, the surgery room or whatever, where they was gonna give me surgery. And then, um, so next thing you know, they poking me a whole bunch of time. My mom bruised up, you know. They poking me a whole bunch of times because my veins are really small. They try to get an IV or whatever. And then, um, and then they did a spinal. I think that's what it's called um, for like the numbness or whatever. And then I'm in there like before they used to give me that spine, I'm in there shaking like just like shake. I could not stop shaking. Like my mouth was shaking, everything was shaking. And it was so many doctors on both sides of my arm trying to get a good vein because my veins are so small and it was freaking terrible, okay? It was terrible. But, um, so then, uh, after they get the spinal together, I, I laid down, I didn't feel anything or whatever. I, it was a lot of pressure, but, but during the time they, that they took him out, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. I just felt a little pressure, but it wasn't bad. So they, I ended up hearing him crying and stuff, and she's like, hey. He come out with his eyes all open, he's looking around. He's so alert. And then they had put him like right next to me, so I gave him a kiss and stuff. And so I saw him. I'm like, oh, you still handsome. And then they put him on the bed and stuff, and down together. And then my husband ended up coming in. Yes, he missed it. It happened that fast. Like I had called him again after. I was like, babe, we had the baby. He's like, what the? <laughs> And then everybody, all the nurses heard him and started laughing. I'm like, you on speaker. They're like, oh, it's okay, we understand. Cause he um he missed it because it happened so quick. But so they um so when he got there, he got suited up or whatever. And then he was holding the baby while they was putting me together. It took them forever to put me together. Like, like it didn't take them long at all to get him out. Like when they did the cutting and stuff, he was out quick as heck. Now, when they was doing everything, take, taking the placenta out and doing it, like stitching me back up, it took so freaking long. I'm like, when is y'all gonna be done? Y'all done yet? When y'all gonna be done? And then she said something about my placenta wasn't looking right. Like, it was like, it was like sticky. Or, I don't know, not, not sticky, but it was like really like nasty, a nasty placenta, she said. And it was really hard to get out. And it was like pieces like, like ripping. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like, it was like, it was a weird looking placenta, she said, and it was really hard to get this placenta out. I'm like, how? You had to just pull it out, but she said it was hard to get it out. So she was thinking that they had just a little, like a little piece in there. Like they, they couldn't get all of it out, I think she was saying. I'm like, what? So, and she was saying like, she, um, I guess she wanted that to pass through me or whatever. Um, like when I use the bathroom and stuff. And I'm like, how y'all couldn't get it out? But that's what she said. Maybe I would have lost my blood if they would have tried to try to get everything. I don't know. Um, so they gave me a whole bunch of fluids and stuff because it was like this, this in, this in case. So we gotta make sure we don't want you to get no blood clots. So I was like, man, y'all get me scared. So I'm on blood clots and stuff. And now my leg be hurting and stuff. Man, I be like, I be scared when I go to the hospital one time because they said somebody blood clot. But, um, yeah, so Rick was holding King or whatever, and then they took forever to put me back together. And then they got me, um, they got me up to a room. Y'all know I don't like medication. And I was refusing it for, for a minute. It was, she was like, it's going to creep up on you. Now, I'll tell you, if y'all go to the hospital for a C-section, just take the med because that pain, 
did creep up and it was it was hard and i'm still in pain it's like it's been like 10 days now yeah it's been about 10 yeah it's been 10 days since i had him and i'm still in pain you know what i'm saying obviously it's not as bad as before but i'm still in pain you know so just take those meds you know they help they take they give some little by little so so that way um, it won't creep up on you and you just be in so much pain you can't bear it, you know? So, oh my God, I wish I had a vaginal delivery. Like, it would have been so much easier. Like, I hate not being able to do certain things. And I got an older special needs kid that's a lot by himself. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't want to play. He's he really rough, too. And I'm, I'm, I'm in pain. I can't pick him. Well, obviously, I shouldn't be picking him up anyway. But I can't play with him like I normally play with him. You know what I'm saying? And he got to learn to be careful with me and careful with the baby. I can't do too much. And it's really hard to, like, make sure you don't pick up nothing and never get the baby. And I feel like it's a lot of stuff that they should have told me that they didn't tell me, which made me upset. Because, um... Yeah, I was just upset and they didn't tell me everything that they didn't tell me, like I need to watch out for and all that. But, um, but yeah, so King was born on August 4th, 2020 at 8.56 p.m. And I was starting to breastfeed. Y'all, now that's, that stuff hurt. It's hard, it hurt. And then, y'all know I had a breast reduction, so some of my milk is like on certain areas and my breast is not coming in. Or even the colostrum. So it's like he would get more from one side. And then when my milk did come in, it was a whole bunch on one, one boob. And wasn't that much on the other. But he had stopped peeing the pooper one day. Because it was like, it's supposed to increase, not decrease. So when he got one to the doctor's apartment, she was like, I think you, I'm not going to have you, um, I think you need to put him on formula until your milk come in. I'm like, look, I don't even want to take, put him on no freaking formula. I was really, really bummed out about this. I was really bummed out. And now I know, like, the next time, if we um, have a kid again, everything is going to be all natural. I'm not going to try and induce. Even though, even if I'm tired of being pregnant, I'm just not gonna do it because I don't think it's worth it. I could have lost my baby. You know, his heart rate kept dropping. If I ain't go with my instinct, then he probably he could have died in my stomach. That would I would have been devastated. So yeah, I'm not gonna do it next time. But yeah, that's my story on my, my labor and delivery story. Um, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. In the next video, I'm going to let you guys meet King. He's asleep right now, so I'm not going to get him up. But I'm going to introduce King to you guys. And yeah, make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you stay, make sure you stay tuned. Until next time, peace.